Okay, so first question today is, um, is number 40, where we have 6x squared plus 108 equals 0. So let's go ahead and obviously um, subtract 108, and then we're going to go ahead and divide by 6. We get negative 18. Now I'd square root both sides, right? So you get x squared equals i squared of 18. Okay. So what did I forget? What else did I forget? Plus or minus. Plus or minus. I should have two answers. Okay. Now as far as uh, um, simplifying the square root of 18, We've done that before, it's just been a while since we've reviewed that, so let's go ahead and do that. Square root of 18, what in that, what? Square root of 9, square root of 2, so I go square root of 9, square root of 2, and so square root of 9 is 3, and then I'm going to throw the i in, and then I'll have square root of 2, okay? There's a reason why we write it that way, as opposed to plus or minus 3 times square root of 2 i. Does anybody see what, why we wouldn't necessarily write it this way? It's the same thing. It's confused because of the i being the square root. Yeah, you don't know whether the i's underneath the square root or not. So even though that's the same thing, you've got your coefficient and then your i. Usually what we do is just go ahead and rewrite it as 3i squared root of 2. Now, it doesn't matter but it just avoids a little bit of confusion, okay, potential confusion. Just like, say, we don't, if we had the square root of 20, we don't write that as square root of um, 5 times 2, you know, just because there's that 2 underneath. We'll go ahead and write it 3 squared of 5. So we'll usually write the square root the last thing for that reason, okay? Um, yeah, but let me ask you this question. Do we need to review on... Uh, Simplifying radical form? Should we take a day and just work on simplifying things? Okay. We will do that before or part of quadratic formula. Okay. Now, I don't know if you guys know this, um, but I was privy to some information yesterday. Um, uh, actually, Saturday, I got an email from Bill Moose that they did hire Scott Frost. So... Just to um, just let you know, in, in case you hadn't heard that, um, yeah, it, it just all passed. Uh, uh, yeah, I know your dad got one because he uh, uh, as a booster, or, you know, buys tickets or something, and as a past letterman got it too. And my favorite quote of that whole um, uh, press conference was when he walked in to see the hundred or so football letter winners, you know. They said, what were your thoughts on that? And what would you think? He goes, well, my first thought was that um, this is pretty unbelievable. And my second thought was that some of these guys have been eating too much. <laughs> and he, I don't know if he was trying to be funny or not. It just didn't seem like it. But I just thought it was kind of cool. So. <laughs> okay. Anyway, anything besides 40? Good question there, Susan. I'm just trying to confuse. What? <laughs> not, not you, but for the other class. What? Which one? 73. Was that the genomes? Oh, the ACE uh, 73. Okay. Mr. Segan, could you do me a favor and close that window? I think we've got to equalize in here pretty well. One store charged 49 for a pair of pants. This price is $40, more, $40 than, uh, than the amount it costs for the store to buy the pair of pants. After a sale, an employee is allowed to purchase any remaining pairs of pants at 30% off the store's cost. How much would it cost an employee to purchase the pants after the sale? Okay. So, 30% off the store's cost. Ooh, this is kind of interesting. I like this. Okay. So, let's go ahead and say C is the cost. How do they get to the what they're going to sell it for? Let's call it uh, SP for selling price. Okay. It says it's 40% more. Okay. So let's let's start from selling cost to get to selling price. What would I take the cost times 1.4? So the selling price is 1.4 times the cost. 
forty percent greater. Oh, okay. 1.4. Okay. And then from there, yeah, this is kind of a tough little question, um, just as far as to get your relationship back going on. The only thing that I want you to understand is that you have to start with the cost and then 40% of that, because it says 40% more than the cost of the store to buy it, so 40% more than this. So you cannot say, take this times 0.6, that's not going to work to get my cost, because this is subtracting 40% of the selling price. But I want to be. I want to add forty percent of the cost. Forty percent of the cost and forty percent of the selling price are two different things. Would you guys agree with that? Forty percent. Forty percent of the selling price is going to be a bigger number because the selling price is higher. Forty percent of the cost is going to be a smaller number because it's the cost that they pay for it is smaller. So, so that you can't do. So you've got to basically find your cost by dividing by one point four, and then go ahead and take that times point seven. Okay. Are you yeah. sure? Yeah. I okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So your point of reference is different. It all has to be re referenced to the, the cost. So go forty nine divided by one point four gives me thirty five dollars is their cost. And now if they're going to go thirty percent off of that, we we'll go thirty five times point seven because we're taking 30% away from the 100%, and then um, that's where we get the 2450. Please tell me that's the right answer. Okay, good. Okay. Okay, anything else? Going once. Are you multiplying complex numbers doing well? Because you got to be able to do that really well today. Okay. Which one? Seventy-four. Oh, yes. Five plus four i minus x plus i y i equals negative one minus three i. Okay. So in this particular situation. My negative one comes from my two real parts. So the way I'm going to look at this as, you can either think about distributing a negative, but my real part here and my real part here is gives me my real part here. So I'm going to go five minus x equals negative one. Okay? And then my four i, my four and my negative y gives me negative three. So 4 minus y or negative or plus negative y equals negative 3. May I focus on your real part your imaginary part? Okay. So going once, going twice, rolling on. What do you think about how to test? Um, we just had one, so it's going to be going to be a little bit. Okay. 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 So here's my three goals today. Goal number one: divide eyes, or shouldn't be eyes. Let's go complex numbers. Okay, that's my first goal. My second goal is to graph complex numbers. And my third goal is to investigate powers of I. Three things today. Okay? Ten days, by the way. Star Wars, ten days. Oh, yeah, I've been counting down for like six months. Okay, I actually know when the one two years from now is coming out. December 19th, but anyway, 2019. Um, I haven't quite started counting down for that one yet. Yeah. And I had a question to, with my wife the other day. I, I asked her, I says, which sounds shorter, two weeks or 14 days? 
14 days, sounds shorter. Even though two is a smaller number? Two weeks? Hmm, I don't know, it's, it's interesting. Yeah. Don't spoil it for me. Mm -hmm. um, they I'll kill you. Oh, really? How could they even get access to it? Yeah. Oh, okay. I've seen where some people that have like terminal cancer and they're going to die like any day that they'll like let them watch it which I was not jealous of them in that situation. Okay. So, okay. So dividing by eyes. Okay. Um, so let's say if I've got this expression, 4 divided by I. Okay. Um, so mathematicians, mathematicians are actually a lot like um, females in the sense they don't, don't like eyes on their bottom. <laughs> Get it? Get it, Shannon? What? 2017. Okay. So what does that have to do with it? Oh, okay. Okay. So anyway. Yo, I, resp I respect them. I, I just think it's kind of funny. But then they put, like, words on their shorts. Yeah. It, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Trickeration, okay. So anyway, no, that's just trying to be funny there. Um, now, okay, hey, I expect better. You know, when I'm dealing with eyes, I expect better behavior out of my pupils. <laughs> hey, don't lash out at me. <laughs> I know. These things are kind of cornea, aren't they? <laughs> okay. I know, you'd probably rather have me just put a lid on it, huh? As in like an eyelid? Okay. No, oh, I'm just... I'm, 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 I'm just trying to... I'm sorry, this is more of a highbrow humor. Um, you guys might not understand. Okay. Um... So, anyway, um, that's all I can think of right now, okay? Um, I guess you guys don't get aqueous humor. Um, so anyway, so if I want to get rid of the eye on the bottom, any ideas? Take times I, take what times I? The whole thing. So you're saying the top times I and the bottom times I? Is that legal? Well, first of all, what is I divided by I? It's, it's one. It's one. So we're multiplying by one, so we're not changing the form of it at all. We're just multiplying by something that'll change the form. So like, take a look at this. I get 4i on the top, and I get i squared on the bottom. Well, what's i squared again? I forget. Negative one. So 4i over negative one, which is negative 4i. Look at that. No more i's on the bottom, because it's 2017. Okay. So, so that's so. This is how you deal with things if what's on the bottom is called a pure imaginary number. Now, first of all, remember that a plus b i is a complex number. That one was just a pure imaginary. There was no real part to it on the bottom. So let's take a look at what we would do if there was a um, non-pure imaginary on the bottom. So say if I had 3 over 1 plus i. Any ideas what I would multiply top and bottom by? Let's take, let's, no, don't write this down. 1 plus i. I think that's a great idea. <laughs> let's just look at the bottom. Um, so I get 1 plus 2i plus i squared. So I get 2i on the bottom. Okay, it got me rid of my real part, but it didn't get rid of my imaginary part. 
Poopy McPoop Jess. But you're kind of close. Any other thoughts? Take it times I. Okay, let's take it times I. Don't write this down until we get it figured out if we're right or not. So if I take it times I, I get I plus I squared. 3I. I, okay, what's I squared again? I forget. Negative 1. Okay, so we still have I on the bottom. So this is where we look back to what we've done before. And if you take a look at it, look at all the things that we've multiplied together. Okay? We've got this up here. If I multiply this times this, I have an I. This times this, I have an I. This times this, I have an I. That times that, I have an I. But look at this. 1 plus 2I and 1 minus 2I, I don't have an I. Hmm. So that gives me an idea. <laughs> so, what should I multiply top and bottom by, do you think? 1 minus I. This you can write down. So let's multiply. Okay, let's go ahead and... Um, so I get 3 minus 3I. And then on the bottom I get... 1, and my i's cancel, and my negative i squared turns into plus 1. So I get 1 plus 1 equals 3 minus 3i three over 2. Okay? But we're not going to leave our answer like that. It's correct, but it's just not in the preferred form. Okay? So, let's go up here and have a little chat. If I take a natural number plus a natural number, don't write this down, a natural number plus a natural number, what type of number do you think I get? A natural number. Okay? Okay? If I take a, um, a rational number plus a rational number, what do you think I get? A rational number. So if I take a complex number, um, I, don't, I can't remember the symbol for a complex number. I don't even know. If I'll have to take a look at that. So if I take a complex plus a complex, I expect to get a complex number. And a complex number is A plus BI plus another complex number, C plus DI, is going to give me some E plus FI. So I want the real part and the imaginary part separate. Okay. So right now, this is not in the form of some real part and then an imaginary part. So we're going to rewrite this. 3 halves minus 3 halves times i. That's going to be my answer. Okay. So I'm going to do two more. 4 plus i. Let's divide that by 2 minus 3i. What should I multiply top and bottom by? 2 plus 3i. Go for it. Sorry. My bad. I'm new to this teaching thing, so...
second or two to finish this out. This is why it's really important for you to be able to multiply uh, complex numbers. That's why I asked to make sure if you guys had any questions on that. Three, two, one. There we go. Five thirteenths plus four thirteenths I. Raise your hand if you had that answer. Only two people. Okay. Should we give him another chance? That's my call. Yeah, I think we probably should. Okay. So before we go on, let's get this figured out. Four times two gives me eight. I have a 2i and a 3i. I'm going to start condensing this into a little bit fewer moves now. 14i, and I have a plus 3i squared, which turns into a negative 3. So on the bottom, I get a 4, and then my i terms cancel out. I get 4 plus 9 gives me 13, and I rewrite that. Okay, come on. Redemption here. Okay. Um, 1 plus 3i over 5 plus 2i. Okay. Go ahead. I thought I froze this. I don't know what you're talking about. I meant to freeze that, I'm sorry. Multiplying time bottom by 5 minus 2i. Okay. People still writing, so we're just going to hang out here for a little bit. So, wrestlers won the tournament this weekend, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Nice job. Awesome, awesome. How'd you guys, how'd you two do? Maybe you three, actually. I'm sorry. Yeah, four. Fourth? Three. First, congratulations. Thank you, Good job. All right. You got 150-something points. That's awesome. Yeah, 150. And then uh, the second place team got like 98. Well, good. Now, is it just because you have more of the weight classes covered this year than before? Or, yeah, um, and we have a lot of experience. Like, good. Like everybody on our team has a So that kind of makes you guys just get really jazzed about working hard and seeing what you guys can do this season. That's awesome. Now suddenly you guys, that's, that's great. Okay, so 11 29ths plus 13 29ths I. Raise your hand if you got that one right. Okay, so figure out what you did. Did you figure it out? Okay, so we've got the 5, and then I got 15, and negative 2 gives me 13. Negative 6i squared, which turns into 6. So I added those together, 6 and 5. 13i, got it. And then my bottom here, 25 minus 4i squared. 29. There we go. These two numbers have a special name. What do you think it is? Boom. Had we talked about that before? Okay.
No, that's good. He impressed me. Complex conjugates. Okay. Two things that where the where it's one is plus, the other one's minus are called conjugates. We've dealt with irrational conjugates before, I believe. Okay. The sum and difference of two or, I'm sorry, the difference of two squares factors into conjugates. They're not complex conjugates, but they're conjugates. Okay. So so that was dividing complex numbers. I expect you to be good at that now. What's the next thing I wanted to do? Graph them. Graph them. Okay. <laughs> this I think is just too cool. Okay. Okay. So, graph them. Well, let's go back to when you were when you were younger. Okay. We said, well, today what we're going to learn, kids, is we're going to learn how to plot numbers on a number line. Okay. So if I plot 5 on a number line, here's what I'm going to do. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and that's where 5 goes. Okay? Good. And I'm curious as to, you know, I wonder what age this was, and if any of you guys went, what goes to the left of 0? That would have been a great question. Now, my, my kid would have asked that because I would have. Okay. Like if they would have done this, they said, okay, let's learn how to plot things on number line. I said, no, that's a number ray. Now it's a number line. Okay. There's negatives. So anyway, so we've got five. Okay. And so we can also do like negative two. Okay, so those are things that have a positive value. Those things are things that have a negative value. Where would I find the things that are neither positive nor negative, or, and also not zero? Would they be to the right? Vertical. We're gonna have to go vertical for this. So we're gonna have to imagine this is my real axis, and then I've got an, another axis which is called my imaginary axis, and now we can plot complex numbers. Say, for example, if I had 3 plus 2i, 1, 2, 3, that would be the number 3 plus 2i. Over 3, up 2. It still is the over 3 on the, on the real part of the number line, but it's too imaginary, so we've got to hover above the real number line a little bit. Okay? So what if I did this? What number is that that I just plotted? Negative 2 plus i. What if I did this? Negative 3i. Zero plus negative 3i. Okay? Um, so we can plot imaginary numbers or complex numbers all day long. Okay? So we get the real numbers. On this one lie the, the pure imaginary numbers. And all these others are the complex numbers, which are a combination of of a real and imaginary, okay? Technically, a real number is a complex number, but I'll talk about that some other time when we have a little more time. Okay, so let's, let's do one more. What if I had um, five, uh, let's go four minus, four minus two i. What quadrant would that be in if we quadrant, uh, cut this up into quadrants? Four, four, four. Yeah, four. So I said four minus two i, that'd be right here. Okay, you guys, you guys are a smart bunch here. So I'm going to ask you a couple questions. What's the absolute value of 5? Five? 5. Why? 5 away from 0. It's the distance from 0. What's the absolute value of negative 1? Okay. So if I said the absolute value of 3 plus 2i... It's the same thing. We're still asking how far is it from zero. The idea of absolute value has not changed. So if I'm talking about how far it is from zero, I'm looking for that distance right there. This is not going to be on your assignment or on a test. This is kind of a, what? Ah. So if I want to know how far this is from zero, how in the heck am I going to figure that out? Distance formula, Pythagorean theorem. And Pythagorean theorem we can do really pretty nicely, you'll see. How long is this? 
three, because that's my real part. How long is this? Two. two. That's my imaginary part. So the absolute value of three plus two i is. Well, no. If I'm just talking distance, this is just two units away. Okay. Square root of. Well, show me where that comes from. Three squared plus two squared, which is square root of thirteen. Right. Okay. So if you wanted to, I could even say a plus b i, the absolute value of that, what is that? a squared plus b squared. No. Square root of that. So absolute value in real land is easy. In complex land, it's just a little bit more complex. So anyway. I won't be on quizzes. Maybe that'll be a good bonus or something like that. Okay? So, okay, so we learn how to divide. We learn how to graph. There, what are, there's one other thing I wanted to do. Powers of I. <laughs> Powers of I. I to the zero. What's anything to the zero power? Nope. One. It's because anything to the zero power is one. Almost anything to the zero power is one. What to the zero power is not one? No. Zero. Did you say that? Zero to the because zero to the zero power is undefined. I think if you take zero to the zero power of your calculator, it comes back um, uh, error, domain error. Okay. Kind of funky. Okay. So i to the zero power is one. Okay. What is i to the first power? No. What is 5 to the first? 5. So i to the first is i. Same rules apply. Anything to the first power is itself, including 0. So then we have i squared. I forget. What was i squared again? Negative 1. I wonder how many times I'm going to say that today. Um, so those three, I think, are really fairly straightforward once we review a couple things. But then we have this i to the third. Any idea what i to the third is? Yeah, it's i squared times i. It's not n no, it's not one. It's negative i. Nice job. Why is it negative i? Because what's i squared again? I forget. Negative 1, so negative 1 times i gives me negative i. And there's another way you can think about that too. This is i to the second. So to get to i to the third, I multiply by i. So I can multiply this by i. Negative 1 times i gives me negative i. Okay? i to the fourth. 1. Why? So i to the fourth is one. Okay? Interesting. Let's keep going. What the heck? What I'd like to do is let's go through all of them, powers of i. Not all of them. All of the um, whole number powers of i. i to the fifth. i squared times i squared times i. That's negative 1 times negative 1, which gives me 1, so it'd just be i. Another thing you can think about it, I can multiply this side by i to get i to the fifth, multiply that side by i to get i. What's i to the sixth? I've heard a couple of things. I've heard negative 1, I've heard negative i. I'm going to go back to i to the fifth here real quick. I to the fifth would be, let, let's go back to I to the fifth real quick because I wanted to do something. This one, if I go I to the fifth, it'd be I squared times I squared, which is negative one times negative one, which gives me one, and then times the I. Or I could do this. I to the fifth is the same thing as I to the fourth times I. What we decide I to the fourth is? One, okay? So it's one I. Okay, back to I to the sixth. 
Negative what? Negative one. Okay. How do you get that? Good. I squared, I squared, I squared gives me negative one, negative one, negative one. Multiply those together, get negative one. Or I can do i to the sixth is i to the fourth times i squared. i to the fourth is one. And what's i squared again? I forget. Negative one. So it's negative one. i to the seventh. I could do i to the fifth times i. Yeah. Negative i. Ooh, you're starting to see a pattern. <laughs> so I'm going to break this up here a little bit. If you wanted to, I go I to, ooh, I go like this. Check this out, Jack, and everybody else whose name is not Jack. Okay, so we're going to go I to the fourth times I to the second times I, which gives me one. What's I squared again? I forget. Negative one. Okay, gives me negative I. Okay, I to the eighth. One. How'd you get that, Wyatt? A pattern? Okay. But let's let's say we don't trust the pattern yet. How can I figure it? You're right. Negative one four times. Or what is it? Two times. I to the fourth times I to the fourth, which is one times one, which gives me one. Now let's use the pattern. I to the ninth. I. I to the tenth. Negative one. I to the eleventh. Negative i, i to the twelfth, one. one. So it goes in in cycles of four, okay? And are you ready to have your mind blown? Yes. Get ready, man, okay? Okay, what's i to the zero? Let's review, i to the zero. I know you can't, one. So there's i to the zero. What's i to the first? i. What's i to the second? Negative one. What's i to the third? Negative i. What's i to the fourth? One. What's i to the fifth? I. I. What's i to the sixth? I. What's i to the seventh? I. And what's i to the eighth? I. So describe what's going on. Every time I increase the power by one, the point moves counterclockwise 90 degrees. Multiplying by i on any complex number really causes a 90 degree rotation. And if I have some time at some point, I'll show you that. Because there's a whole geometry of complex numbers I could probably spend about two or three days on. That I never knew about when I was in high school. I was just like, that was cool. Okay? So now, what I would like you to be able to do is if I said i to the 41st, we need to figure out what i to the 41st is. So now you'll notice that i to the 0, 4, 8, 12, so every four rotations, 40, and i, right? What's i to the 40th? 1. So it's 1 times i, which is just i. It always starts here. So any multiple of 4, i to the multiple of 4 stops here. And then from there, i to the first, i to the second, i to the third. So for example, if I did i to the 306,250th, I want to be able to do that. Remarkably easy. Remarkably easy. Why is this? 200. Is 200 a multiple of 4? Yes. Everything from here on is a multiple of 4. Because a hundred's a multiple of four, thousands a multiple of four, hundred thousands a multiple of four. So all we got to look at is our last two digits. So i to the fiftieth. How do you want to look at that? I to the forty-eighth times i to the second. What's i to the forty-eighth? 
one, okay? And what's i to the, I to the second again, I forget? Negative one, okay? So, negative one. All you gotta look at is the last two digits. This is what's kind, of, what's kind of referred to as a periodic function. Every four it repeats. Every four it repeats. And this is a visual for you visual learners out there. Okay? Um, now when we get into things like i to the one half, that's a little bit more challenging. Because i to the one half equals the square root of i. Yes, I can have the square root of i. And that would, there's i to the zero, i to the first, well, i to the, set, I to the uh, one half would be right here. Which for using mathematics that, you know, um, we'll have to review at some point. It's one half plus um, one over, no, I'm sorry, square root of two over two plus square root of two over two i. And there's also a cube root of i and a fourth root of i, but you wouldn't need to worry about that. That's more of a mental curiosity than anything. Okay? So, divide, graph, and powers of i. Just out of curiosity, how do you think you do i to the negative one? Clockwise. Which would make sense because if I said i to the negative 1, that's the same thing as dividing by i, which if I multiply top and bottom by i, I get i over i squared, which what's i squared, I forget? Negative, negative 1, so I get negative i, which, there we go, negative i. It all fits together so seamlessly and perfectly, it's just amazing. But I think i is kind of cool. Okay, so here's what we got for today. Remember, Dividing complex numbers, tell me what I would do. Multiply top and bottom by the complex conjugate. Graphing complex numbers, pretty straightforward, I think. Okay, and powers of i ends up in multiples of four. Let's go page 250. Okay, we don't have much time, so I'm gonna keep it short. The other class had no homework time. You guys have a minute. Boom, shakalaka.